the militant group Al-Shabaab in late August launched an offensive aimed at toppling Somalia's transitional federal government and the African Union peacekeeping mission in Somalia, known as Amisom. Mogadishu has come under heavy shelling. More than 100 people are dead. Uganda says it will send more troops if the United States provides more funding. The State Department has responded by telling VOA that it will continue to provide equipment, training and logistical support and encourages other donors to step forward with additional help. Walid Farez from the Foundation for Defense of Democracies says the U.S. is already doing too much in other parts of the world. We are overseeing now the withdrawal of the last units from Iraq. We are engaged in escalation in Afghanistan. There is a, an issue of concern in Yemen, just across from Somalia. But given the urgency of the present situation, Farez proposes an alternative. Let's keep in mind that Somalia is a member of the Arab League, so we need a lot of financial support from the oil-rich countries, uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, uh, Kuwait, uh, all the Emirates, they have to pour in money in Somalia if they consider Somalia as a member of the Arab League. And Arthur Bronwyn Britton writes um, regularly about the Horn of Africa and visited Somalia in April. She advocates what she calls a new approach to Somalia. The Shabaab is, you know, it appears to be a very unified, sort of directed organization, but in fact it's a fairly loose conglomeration of a lot of different kinds of people. And that currently they're unified in their desire to get rid of the TFG and Amazon, the peacekeepers. But that without that, that unifying purpose, there's actually not a lot of cohesion there. Britain adds that some fears about al-Shabaab are unrealistic. These fears that we have about the Shabaab sort of becoming a new Taliban in East Africa, I think, are very much overblown. In this particular instance, I, I think it's, it's worth asking, if we didn't have this, this sort of artificial government, this, this notional government in name only sitting in Mogadishu, then would the Shabaab have a reason, a nationalist reason, to attack outside of the country? But a spokesman for the Ugandan army Lieutenant Colonel Felix Kulayigie says critics should not be so harsh on the TFG. He joined VOA by phone from Kampala. I mean, how can it be capable when uh, it is just building from scratch and dealing with an international terrorist group that is being funded by elements in Afghanistan and Pakistan? Somali President Sharif Sheikh Ahmed continues to enjoy UN support, but Kulayigie says the UN must do more. One may ask why has the UN, for example, appointed prominent persons for Darfur, for DRC, for Burundi, but there is no prominent person for Somalia. Isn't that a bit suspicious? Forez from the Foundation for Defense of Democracies says something drastic has to be done because of repercussions for the Horn of Africa region. What they need to do is a crafting of political national unity, even with forces they don't agree on everything with. That's the first stage. And the second stage is for the United States to be very active, not just with the government, but with non-government organizations, with popular organizations in, in Somalia. That's the best I think we can do at this stage in time. Mariama Jalo, VOA News.